starts right now. New at noon, a San Antonio firefighter found with a handgun in his car during his arrest this summer for reckless driving will remain with the department. This is despite it being his second weapon related arrest in less than two years. That's according to disciplinary records obtained by the KZ-12 defenders. 33 year old Jesus Cuevas was handed a 90 day suspension in early November, months after San Marcos police said he was speeding on I-35 and passing vehicles using the inside shoulder. In September of 2018, San Antonio police say Cuevas was driving near I-35 South and Cesar Chavez Boulevard without a tire on his vehicle's left rim. Officers say his blood alcohol content was 0.15 and he told them he did not have weapons in the vehicle. However, police say that was not true. Suspension paperwork related to the 2018 arrest shows that Cuevas was eventually handed a 75 day suspension. To read how SAFD is defending the decision, head over to KSAT.com. Meanwhile, the Bear County Sheriff's Office is still searching for a suspect after two teens were killed. BCSO tells us 18 year old James Alexander Miller is the person trying to be found. Deputies tell us he's wanted in the murder of 14 year old Bobby Carter and 18 year old Robert Smith. The murder happened on December 17th in the 7300 block of Rubens Drive on the northeast side. Investigators say Miller and another man approached the victim's vehicle and started shooting. The second suspect was identified as Jalen Deers and is already in custody. If you have any information about Miller's whereabouts, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. And Crime Stoppers also looking for a man accused of robbing a restaurant on the northwest side. Police tell us back on December 17th, the man you see on your screen went into the Mi Sierra Alisco in the 1900 block of Bandera and demanded money from the cash register. Investigators say the suspect hand a handgun under or what appeared to be a handgun under his sweater and made it look like that. Police say the man got all the money from the register and drove away in a gray colored SUV. If you have any information that could lead to an arrest, you're once again asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. And police are still looking for a man who they say robbed a Northwest Side convenience store overnight. It happened around 3.30 this morning at a Stripes in the 7200 block of Eckert Road. That's near Bandera. Police tell us a man with a red cap, brown shorts, and a black mask held the clerk at gunpoint. They say he stole some money and beer and got away in a black Mazda. Now to the coronavirus crisis here at home. Mayor Ron Nuremberg announcing 43 new cases and no new deaths during the last briefing. And while those numbers may seem low, the mayor says many cities, including San Antonio, could not download COVID-19 case data from the state on Sunday, which contributed to that lower number. In addition, 1,079 people are in the local hospitals with 299 in the ICU and 164 on ventilators. Last night's briefing also saw the announcement of new restrictions for businesses. Bear County business is now operating at 75% capacity. We'll have to cut back to 50% capacity starting today. The cutbacks were mandated in Governor Greg Abbott's executive order from October. It allowed certain businesses to operate at 75% capacity unless they were located in an area with at least seven consecutive days where the number of patients hospitalized with the virus exceeded 15%. Bear County officials say that threshold was met on Sunday. The measure also suspends all elective surgeries. For a list of which businesses are affected by the restrictions, just head over to KSAT.com. And also this noon, a potential battle in the Senate. This after the House of Representatives passed an amendment to give Americans $2,000 in stimulus aid instead of $600 and voted to override President Trump's veto of the defense bill. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest from Washington. There's one final push to increase those stimulus checks from $600 to $2,000. The bill is passed. On Monday, the House narrowly passing a bill that would boost the amount Americans receive in a second round of pandemic relief, the measure garnering bipartisan support. But even though it passed in the House and President Trump supports the move for $2,000 checks, its fate remains a mystery in the Senate. It's unclear if Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell will even bring it to the Senate floor for a vote. For unemployed Americans like Beth Sullivan, $600 just isn't enough. What a way to slap people at Christmas time. Meanwhile, on Capitol Hill, the House 
House overwhelmingly voted to override President Trump's veto of the must-pass defense policy bill. The Senate now expected to hold its own veto override vote later this week. The president vetoed that bill last week because a portion of it did not repeal a law that shields social media companies from being liable for what's posted on their websites by third parties. Trump calling it a serious threat to our national security and election integrity. It must be repealed. Meanwhile, with just 23 days until he officially takes office, President-elect Joe Biden is sounding the alarm, accusing the Trump administration of obstructing the transition and putting national security at risk. We have encountered roadblocks from the political leadership at the Department of Defense and the Office of Management and Budget. It's nothing short, in my view, of irresponsibility. The Department of Defense pushing back against Biden's claims, saying in part that the DOD has provided the incoming administration with more information and documents than they requested. Democratic Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer says he plans to bring that $2,000 stimulus legislation to the Senate today, but if just one senator objects, then there won't even be a vote unless Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell brings the bill to the floor. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News in Washington. In the meantime, back here at home, visit San Antonio President CEO Cassandra Matea has resigned. She'll be leaving her position next month. She worked for the city for 10 years. However, this week, she was named president and CEO of Visit Orlando in Florida. The Visit San Antonio Board of Directors Executive Committee named Dave Krupinski, the organization's current chief operating officer, as interim director. The executive committee will also recruit and seek Matea's permanent replacement in the coming months. And good chances of rain headed our way. How much rain could we see? We've got an update plus a look at the potential for some wintry weather up in the hill country. And we are going bowling tonight here in San Antonio. Won't be the same, but still we'll talk about the Valero Alamo Bowl coming up. Last week, we showed you what travel restrictions have done to Laredo's main international bridge downtown. But when you take a look at the World Trade Bridge just a few miles away, Although it slowed down initially, Jesse De Goyata reports the pandemic has done little to disrupt Laredo's busiest commercial bridge that's also one of the nation's largest inland ports. Long lines of tractor trailers crossing Laredo's World Trade Bridge are a welcome sight deep into a pandemic. The trade and economy is, 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 still, is still working strong. Even stronger, many say. At times, cross-border traffic estimated as high as 16,500 trucks heading north and south. Early on, though, numbers show it fell from around 15,000 trucks daily to just over 9,000 soon after the pandemic spread to Mexico. Automotive basically closed their plants for a month, almost a month and a half. Now that production has ramped up at many of the larger plants in Mexico, parts and products on board those trucks are once again coming through warehouses in Laredo for distribution throughout the U.S. St. Joe, Missouri, this merchandise goes to Denver, various other locations. This was going to New Jersey. Everything from brooms to tequila, he says, even PPE and medical supplies. Also toilet paper, believe it or not, coming out of Mexico because of the shortages here in the United States. He says much of whatever Americans may need or want, especially now, must cross here first. U.S. Customs and Border Protection there to try to make sure it's done safely for everyone's protection. It's something that, that's vitally important to us. Um, to, to protect the, the country, to protect the, the, the economy. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. 2020 is going to go down as the year of toilet paper, or not. <laughs> yeah, the lack over. thereof, right? Exactly. And the year of weird weather. Yeah, it's, it's been an interesting year, for sure. And we're going to have an interesting week to sort of uh, send 2020 out with a bang, if you will. Uh, the aquifer is down a tenth of a foot to 662.9 in your pollen count. Not great numbers here. Mountain Cedar is very high, 12,540. Really jumped up today. We've got some good rain in the forecast, some good rainfall totals. And again, maybe a little bit of wintry weather. We've got all the details coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. 
have We Got Deals for you. Welcome to KSATDeals.com. You know, with my busy schedule, I really need a good night's sleep, and these bamboo sheets will definitely help with that. Take a look at how soft these are. The Comfort Luxury Sheet Set. It's 1,800 thread count. Feels like 100 bucks. Breathable, no matter what the Texas season is. The microfiber and bamboo help with that. They have a deep pocket for extra thick mattresses, and it helps to reduce allergens. They come in seven great colors, including white, gray, aqua, and silver. You can grab a set for every bedroom in the house. Retail price is $109, but the case at deals price is $32.99. That's a 70% discount. Now you can get this deal and many more at caseatdeals.com. All right, we've been talking about a wintry mix, at least for the hill country, and some rain for San Antonio. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's wet and gives us a relief from all this dry, <laughs> dry, dry grass. And It's looking better and better, David, for okay. some good rainfall totals here in San Antonio, and I think, yes, we will take that. Some places in the state will get some wintry weather. I think most of that's going to be well to our north and west. So let's jump right into the forecast. We've got mostly cloudy skies here right now. Moving across San Antonio, a couple of light showers here and there. We've seen that through the day. Nothing of great significance, and we don't expect much in the way of rainfall today. Just quite a bit of cloud cover, and that'll keep temperatures right there in the 70s. We're at 71 right now with the south southeasterly breeze at about 17, gusting to 26. So it is a breezy day, too. 64 Bernie State, 76 in New Braunfels, 71 Stenson, 66 right now in Hondo. We started off warm and we're going to end up fairly warm. Yesterday we got up to 78, probably not that warm today just because of the added cloud cover, but mid 70s for sure and some 60s right now in the hill country. Dew points, as you might imagine, are very high. We still got a good southeasterly breeze, so that's pulling in those dew points into the 50s and 60s. That makes it muggy out there and that's resulting in some light showers streaming all the way up into parts of Oklahoma and there's already an initial piece of energy that's producing snow up there around Omaha and parts of Kansas uh, this afternoon. Our main area of low pressure though still back off to the west right there. This is a, a good looking healthy system and one thing about it is it's going to dig very far to the south down into Mexico and then back into Texas with this kind of track. That's good for us. That means more rain. When you get an area of low pressure moving right over top of us, that gives us the energy we need. So this system sort of unique, at least compared to the last couple of systems in the sense that this is digging much farther south, and that is good news. Forecast calls for some showers and storms later today along a frontal boundary in North Texas. That front does sink south tomorrow. By tomorrow morning, we've got some showers and then some storms trying to develop along this front. As it works south, I think we will get more storms developing, especially east of San Antonio. It's not going to be just a ton of coverage here. We're talking about a 40% chance, but what storms we could see could be on the stronger side, mainly off to the east. Then as we get into tomorrow night, rain chances really increase as our upper level low gets closer. So widespread showers, and you'll notice some of the pink and blue colors there. That represents some winter, wintry weather. Places like Rock Springs, Junction up to Fredericksburg, maybe out towards Ozona. Those are areas that we'll be watching, and that continues into Thursday. This is Thursday midday. Still have some snow out there. Notice it's not in San Antonio. It's all off uh, places like Junction, Rock Springs, and Ozona that will get some of that snowfall, and then that will move away Thursday night. We'll clear out for New Year's Day. In fact, when we ring in the new year, uh, midnight, it looks pretty good. Uh, as far as the thunderstorms go tomorrow, there is a marginal risk of some stronger storms, gusty winds, maybe some small hail at that area outlined there in green. And then as far as rainfall goes, and I think this really is the big takeaway here, one to one and a half inches potentially here around San Antonio, out west, maybe half an inch to an inch, which is great for those areas, areas that really do need rain. And then our eastern counties could be looking at two to three inches in some cases. So these are big numbers. As far as the snow goes, we mentioned that uh, snow is possible in the hill country north and west of San Antonio. I'd say even as far south as Eagle Pass, there could be a few flakes. Del Rio, the better chance of snow is going to be northern parts of Alvarez County and places like San Angelo, where they could pick up some pretty decent snowfall totals, some accumulation there. So if you're traveling north and west, keep that in mind. But San Antonio and uh, really uh, surrounding areas and off to the east, 
Uh, it's just going to be a cold rain for us. Forecast for today up around 75 for a high. We'll keep it mostly cloudy. Some chances of rain through tonight into tomorrow. Tomorrow, 40% chance of showers and storms, especially as that front comes through. And then a 90% chance of rain Wednesday night into Thursday and some lingering showers on Thursday. 33 Friday morning, things will clear out. And then 62 for the new year to start the new year and then mid 60s over the weekend. So uh, some good rain headed our way to finish out 2020. We'll see where that puts us as far as rainfall totals for the year. But I would imagine, well, we will be still below average for the Hey, but an inch, inch and a half will take it. Absolutely. All right, Justin, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, the Spurs have to create their own excitement during home games for a while longer. And the Aggies are ready to prove they should have been in the tournament next. This is your Daily Tech and Business Briefing from Cheddar. If you've been hoping for a small drone to land on your doorstep holding your package, your prayers have now been answered. The FAA says that they've officially been authorized to fly small delivery drones overhead at nighttime. The move a big step forward for the administration in commercializing widespread drone deliveries. Meanwhile, the best-selling tech item of the year goes to the iPhone. In the last year alone, Apple sold roughly 195 million of the devices. That's a solid jump from the 185 million they sold last year. While you might be surprised at this kind of increase amid a global pandemic, experts are pointing to the constant need for upgraded tech as people continue to work from home. And HBO Max and Disney boasting a boost in app downloads following recent film debuts on their streaming services. Over the weekend, HBO Max set a single-day record for downloads of their mobile app on the heels of the superhero sequel Wonder Woman 1984. Just between Friday and Sunday alone, an estimated 554,000 users signed up for the app. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. The San Antonio Spurs doing a little defense at COVID-19. They're not going to allow fans in the stands at the 18th Center. They'll continue to play in front of empty seats, at least for now. They made that announcement yesterday. The Spurs were hoping to start bringing the fans back in the AT&T Center, at least in small numbers, Friday, New Year's Day, when they were scheduled to host the Lakers, but have now put those plans on hold. Here is what Spurs Sports Entertainment CEO R.C. Buford had to say in part. While we are confident in the plans and protocols we have in place, we are uncomfortable hosting fans at this moment as the COVID-19 numbers and data in our community continue to trend in the wrong direction. And the Texas Longhorns went straight to the Alamo Dome when they got to town yesterday to get in a workout, getting ready to take on the Colorado Buffaloes in the Valero Alamo Bowl. It is the Horns' second straight appearance in the bowl game here in San Antonio. Head coach Tom Herman and quarterback Sam Ellinger and Joseph Asai, who was named to the Associated Press All-American First Team, got in their final workout of the season before the big game tonight. One question Herman was asked in his final press conference before the game, with five captains opting out and with injuries, does he feel he has enough experience for the game? Offensive line will, will look a, a bit different as well as uh, some different positions, but you know we, we played uh, a game with similar personnel uh, our last regular season game, and, and uh, we've been practicing all week with, with the same guys in the same positions. So um, you know feel good about what we're you know the guys that we'll be able to put out on the field. Now, the Buffaloes have been in town since the weekend, soaking up the sights, at least what they can. Colorado decided to opt in for the game, while some other Pac-12 teams decided to opt out of bowl games. The Buffaloes did have two positive COVID-19 tests last week, and head coach Carl Durrell was asked how this impacted his team before the big bowl game. We did lose some depth in certain areas, um, but that's, you know, everybody's dealt with that, you know, over the course of the season. and. Um, it's kind of one of those things that can we continue to battle, Justin, until the season gets over, you know. So, uh, but we're we're healthy enough to play, you know, at least after this morning's test results, and and we'll be we'll be ready to roll tomorrow night. All right, so actually that's tonight, eight o'clock, Alamo Dome kickoff, right there, Longhorns ranked 20th in country against the Buffaloes.
It is also game week for the Fighting Texas Aggies. They are preparing to take on North Carolina in the Orange Bowl in Miami. The Aggies were pretty disappointed. They were left out of the college football playoff ranked number five by the selection committee behind both Ohio State and Notre Dame. But now their focus is on beating the Tar Heels on Saturday, where they are seven-point favorites. Kellen Mon held what could be his last press conference in college before his last game in college. He was asked if he had given any thought to returning to play for the Aggies one more season because of the extra year of eligibility given all seniors by the NCAA during the COVID-19 pandemic. I've thought about it and, you know, it's kind of been something that's talked around the locker room a little bit, but, you know, I think just where everybody's focus is, we just want to win this game. We want to finish off the season strong and um, then kind of move on from there and, decide what everybody else is going to do. All right, so it's game first, decision second. By the way, the Aggies offensive lineman Kenya Green named to the Associated Press All-American second team. Kickoff between number five, Texas A&M, and number 13, North Carolina, set for 7 o'clock Saturday evening. Hey, still coming back, Seth Hour has been an eventful year with the pandemic and particularly busy hurricane season. Coming up, we've got to look back at some of the year's biggest headlines. And if you've ever been shocked to find out your insurance dropped your prescription, you're not alone. Coming up today at 5, how to get the medicine you need at an affordable price. That's coming up after Entertainment Tonight. Hospitals across the country are reporting a record number of COVID-19 patients. And according to COVID Tracking Project, as more vaccines are administered, there are questions as to why more people haven't been given the shot yet. All this as December is now on track to become the deadliest month of the pandemic. ABC's Andrea Fujihi has more. Staggering challenges in California. In just days, Los Angeles County is expected to surpass 10,000 coronavirus deaths. To combat the surge, they're requiring all travelers to quarantine for 10 days as the region reports a 600% increase in deaths since November. On average, Nine to 10 people in LA County test positive for COVID-19 every minute. Vaccinations there and across the country cannot come soon enough, but just over 2 million have been delivered so far, well under the hope of 20 million by the end of the year. Now the White House task force pushing that goal to the end of January. Some health experts are frustrated at the process. The biggest problem is getting the vaccines from the states into people's arms. There's a lot of steps and there just hasn't been much planning. There hasn't been much investment. Vice President-elect Kamala Harris and her husband, Doug Emhoff, receiving the Moderna vaccine in Washington, D.C. And more help may be on the way as another vaccine is entering late stage trials. A fifth vaccine from drug maker Novavax is entering phase three trials. So far, December has been the deadliest month on record in the U.S. with 65,000 COVID-19 deaths. The number up significantly since November with 37,000, according to the COVID tracking project. Healthcare workers admitting the emotional toll the pandemic brings as they try to comfort the dying. I kept telling him over and over again, you know, your wife is here. Um, your sons are here and they love you. And I was the one that was holding his hand while he died and not his family. And despite the CDC warnings for people not to travel during the holidays, the TSA says again they screened more than a million flyers on Monday. That's the seventh day in less than two weeks with more than a million people traveling. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. Major damage at at least one death after a strong earthquake hit central Croatia today. The epicenter of the 6.3 magnitude quake was located 27 miles from the country's capital. This is the largest earthquake to hit Croatia so far this year. And according to the state news agency, the mayor of a town in central Croatia said that half of the town has been destroyed and called for immediate emergency aid. Days after a Christmas morning bombing in downtown Nashville, a motive remains unclear. But the 63-year-old man who killed himself and wounded three other people in the blast left behind clues that he never intended to survive. Anthony Quinn Warner gave away his car, telling the recipient he had cancer. He signed a document that transferred his Tennessee home to a California woman for nothing in return. And the computer consultant told an employer that he was retiring. But he didn't leave behind a clear digital footprint or any other obvious clues to explain why he set off Friday's explosion or played a message warning people to flee before the blast. 
All right, some cold air is coming. Woo, can't wait for that. What's it bringing with it, though? That's the big question. Some good chances for rain. All right. That's yeah, cool. that, that's that's the big story. And, you know, judging by my Twitter feed this morning, people are none too happy with today's pollen count. Mountain Cedar jumped up 12,540. That's the highest count we've had so far this season. You see, we started off December doing pretty well. The numbers were fairly low. Just within the last week or so, they have really jumped up. And now we're starting to see these very high numbers. We tend to peak in January, so we got more time before uh, we're done with Mount Cedar. But uh, today, very high, 12,540. Visible satellite picture shows we've got a lot of cloud cover here over San Antonio, really a large portion of the I-35 corridor. A little clearer as you get out to the west. Del Rio Eagle passing a little bit less than we have cloud cover. But it's going to be a mostly cloudy day. It's going to be humid, too. And temperatures are going to be on the warm side. 71 here in San Antonio. 80 right now in Laredo. Amarillo, though, behind a front. That same front that's going to work through our area. Down to 40 right now. And that cooler air will head our way late tomorrow into Thursday. Forecast for today, 76. 20% chance of rain across the board. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. That cool down plus some rain chances and maybe a little bit of a wintry mix up there in the hill country. We've got the latest update on that forecast coming up in just a few minutes. David. All right. Justin, we'll look forward to that. Thank you. 2020 is drawing to an end, and it's truly been unlike any other year. From the pandemic to an active hurricane season, here's a look back at some of this year's biggest stories. Iranian General Qasem Soleimani assassinated in a U.S. drone strike. The Senate will convene as a court of impeachment. Donald John Trump be acquitted of the charges in said articles. A helicopter carrying NBA legend Kobe Bryant crashing, killing everyone on board. Chinese health authorities are still working to identify the virus in Wuhan. Officials there confirm new cases of the coronavirus. That first case here in the U.S. Thousands of passengers on that cruise ship are stuck at sea. At least 10 nursing homes with patients testing positive. The World Health Organization declaring it a global pandemic. We're deeply concerned by the alarming levels of spread. The world's biggest economy creaking to a halt. Shutting down restaurants, gyms, movie theaters, Broadway dark. Workers worried about life without a steady income. Do I pay my rent? Do I pay my bills? Do I feed my children? The president signing off on a $2 trillion stimulus. With schools shut down in more than 35 states. Marking a seismic shift to online learning. Learning. America at war with the coronavirus. There's patients everywhere because of this. Hospitals are nearly full. Pretty much the entire emergency department's a hot zone. When you've seen someone agonally gasp for air, it will be burned into my memory. Running out of ventilators. Stretched pretty thin. It's a scary time to be a doctor. Growing PPE shortages, healthcare workers unprotected. I didn't sign up for this, literally risking my life. Now they're losing their own. They run towards tragedy. Nurses providing that critical link between patients and their family. They're dying alone in a hospital room without family. We can't grieve with our friends and our family. It makes everything 10 times worse and tougher. Pleading for more protection for essential workers. To protect the people that are vulnerable. Protect the low worker. Disproportionately impacting black Americans. I missing my husband. The Navajo Nation, now the highest infection rate in the country. Historic decimation among the Hispanic community. Say her name! Brianna Taylor! 26-year-old Brianna Taylor shot and killed by Louisville police officers. No one was charged in connection to Taylor's death. This cell phone video shows the moment when 25-year-old Ahmaud Aubrey was killed. His life shouldn't have ended the way that it ended. What's his name? The anger and sadness over George Floyd's death seen across the nation. None of it is new, but this is the first time everybody's seeing it. He was a great father, a great husband. 27-year-old Rashard Brooks was shot and killed by police. It didn't have to end that way. Outrage igniting in Kenosha. The anger sparked by the shooting of 29-year-old Jacob Blake. They shot my son seven times. It is going to take a miracle for Jacob to ever walk again. Cries for justice in the wake of the death of Daniel Prude. Nobody deserves to die when they are in need. Wildfires raging in the west. Firefighters battling the fire from the air and the ground. Flames coming off of it, creating these fire worlds. This is hell and I don't know what else. 
families struggling to get out through thick plumes of smoke. Our house burnt down to the ground. Officials say that dozens of raging fires are burning into each other, creating what they call complexes. We're so lucky to be alive. 30 named storms developed in the Atlantic Basin, the most in any year in recorded history. Hurricane Issei is wreaking havoc. First time I was in a house that ever shook. Oh! Lake Charles took a direct hit from Category 4 Hurricane Laura, one of the most powerful storms to ever hit the U.S. Hurricane Sally crushing the Gulf Coast. We literally have water coming in the windows and the door. It's hard to believe that it's happening again. Hurricane Delta is coming ashore. Southwest Louisiana is getting slammed again. Hurricane Zeta right now is cutting into New Orleans. This race, unlike any other, resulting in record mail-in and early voting. No matter who you vote for, I feel like everybody vote counts. We've won with the most votes ever cast for presidential ticket. Vice President Kamala Harris makes history. President Trump and the First Lady have tested positive for the coronavirus. Hospitalizations surging to unprecedented levels. We are really in a public health crisis. Decimating American communities. The ICU is full. The teams are working as hard as they can. One hospital has run out of staff. If you don't have the manpower, I cannot save your life. That grim new milestone, more than 300,000 American lives have now been lost. This is what we've been waiting for. A vaccine injection, but it was also an injection of hope. This is the beginning of the end for COVID. Unbelievable year. They are called the Defenders, but you, have you ever wondered how the KSAT 12 investigative team got their name? You'll definitely see the answer in their one hour investigative special coming up tonight at seven o'clock. It features stories on everything from problems with pilot safety to let alone risks to your children at some recreation parks. Investigative reporters Dylan Collier and Tim Gerber will show you in nine stories how their focus is protecting you, your loved ones and your community by both informing and getting results. I was just glad that you guys got involved. I can breathe a sigh of relief now. You will also see stories on COVID from the help on, to, on COVID for the unemployed, problems with the justice system, and allegations of scams. It's all coming up in the Defenders Protecting You, a KSAT 12 one-hour special. Once again, that's tonight at 7 o'clock here on KSAT 12. The new year is the right around the corner, and some folks might be gearing up to dust off some old resolutions. However, some mental health experts suggest a new approach to resolutions coming up next year in 2021. And the New Year's Eve celebration in New York City is going virtual. How you can experience the iconic event through an app. Get that for you after the break. Like so many other things during the pandemic, the New Year's Eve Times Square celebration is going virtual. Through a free app, you can watch the celebration through nine different cameras they've got set up. You can download it at vnye.com. You can start celebrating the new year with games right now. They've got art and virtual Times Square. And when it comes to those celebrating in person, there won't be the traditional crowds for the New Year's Eve ball drop, though. It's not open to the public because of the pandemic. But there will be some VIP guests there. They're 2020's heroes, first responders, frontline and essential workers and their families. And it's that time again when people set those lofty goals for the new year. But with the stress of the pandemic in mind, some mental health experts suggest a new approach to resolutions in 2021. CNN's Mandy Gaither has it for us. Who would have known 2020 was going to test us all? While many resolved to do something new in the new year, 2021 may not be the best time to do that, according to Sophie Lazarus, psychologist with Ohio State's Wexner Medical Center. What happens is we set a really high bar um, January 1st and we don't meet it and we feel more discouraged. And especially now we really just don't need that for ourselves. Especially as we say goodbye to a year full of pandemic stress. Lazarus says a reasonable resolution would be to simply try to take better care of ourselves. Three ways to do that begin with shifting your perspective. Don't focus solely on your hardships. Trying to also bring into this um, scope of our attention things that we're grateful for, like maybe family, friends, our health, even just kind of a sunny day in the gloominess of winter. Next, take time away 
away from technology. Put the phone away, put the computer away, focus on what you're doing. Um, really gives our, our mind a break, allows us to be in the present moment. Also gives us a break from this constant barrage um, of things we need to worry about. Finally, be kind to yourself. Let's give ourselves the same grace that we would give someone that we really love and care about, and just kind of see how that affects um, our energy and our well-being. This year, you might just want to resolve to like give to yourself a break. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Well, cookies and candy will take care of that. Does that help? A piece of pie. Yeah, <laughs> take care of yourself. Food. <laughs> Food's the answer. That's it. Uh, well, let's go outside for you right now. Mostly cloudy skies. Let's look at the rainfall for this year. 19.94, so we've yet to get to 20 inches in 2020. We're 12 inches below average. Good news is we do have some rain on the way this week. So far today, 71, the high 64 was the lowest. Not much change between the low and high with all the humidity. Records are 83 and 16. That's 16 set back in 1983. We'll talk about those rainfall chances coming up. This SA Salutes Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Texas Med Clinic. Hi, we're Texas Med Clinic's Law Crew. We'd just like to say a happy holidays and thank you to all our first responders for helping us get through COVID. And at Texas Med Clinic, we like to say we like to treat you well. So happy holidays and... Texas Med Clinic, we, we like treat you well. well. So if you are not tired of board games with your kids or card games with your kids or hide and seek with your kids around the house, guess what? Tomorrow night might be a good night to pull some of those games back out. Yeah, game night sounds good. Wednesday yeah. night and most of the day Thursday, it's going to be one of those blustery, cool, sort of wet days. And then it gets better for New Year's Day. So it's it's really just sort of a couple of couple days here where we deal with some not so nice weather. Let's go outside for you, show you that today, mostly cloudy. It's really not all that bad. It's fairly warm out there, although it doesn't look like it. Uh, 71 degrees at the airport, 70 Kelly, 73 Randolph in a good southerly breeze at this point. It's been rather gusty today. Uh, it's brought in a lot of moisture. We have a lot of cloud cover as a result. There are going to be some breaks here and there. We've already seen some of that, but for the most part, it, uh, it'll be mostly cloudy. We're seeing that here in San Antonio right now. Temperatures low 70s across Bear County, 64 in Bernie State, 67 in Hondo, 73 in Seguin. More breaks out west, and I think we'll get up above 80 in Carrizo Springs. 79 there right now, 76 in Catula. You got 60s in the whole country. Kerrville up to Fredericksburg. Dew point, it's going to be high today, high tomorrow before that front comes through, and then it just falls off. Uh, we'll get some drier air in here, especially Friday and Saturday. There will still be enough moisture, though, Thursday, where we'll get some decent rain chances as those temperatures plummet. Radar and satellite shows we've got showers streaming up out ahead of our next storm system. And then you get into some wintry weather across the plains, places like Omaha, across some Missouri, seeing some snow at this hour. The main bulk of the energy, though, still out to the west. Big upper level low out here over California. And this thing's swinging south, pretty far to the south. And that's why our rain chances are as good as they are. And that's why there are there is also a chance for some wintry weather because this thing is coming so far south. We'll show you where the chances for that are here in just a second. First, let's track where the front is going to be. Starts out in the Texas Panhandle uh, this afternoon, some rain up there, and then eventually works its way south through the day tomorrow. Should be here by tomorrow afternoon. You'll notice the best chance as this front comes through for showers and storms is going to be to our east. I still think we have a decent shot here in San Antonio of some scattered showers and storms. And when the front comes through, there could be a couple strong storms too. But our best chance of rain is going to be Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. Widespread rain as our upper level low pulls in here. We still could see a few rumbles of thunder. And then across the hill country, temperatures will start to turn cold enough to where we could see a wintry mix, maybe some snow mixing in places like Rock Springs, maybe Kerrville up to Junction, Ozona, and even down to Del Rio, I think. Uh, there could be a few flakes mixed in there. That'll be the case Thursday morning into midday Thursday as well with some snow. And there could be a little bit of accumulation, but I think mainly off to our north and west, not here in San Antonio. And then things will clear out good uh, nicely Thursday night. As far as the severe weather risk, we do have a marginal risk of some stronger storms as the front comes through tomorrow. So there's that. And then we have a decent chance of some pretty good rainfall. One to one and a half inches here in San Antonio. Two to three inches off east, maybe even up to an inch. Eagle Pass up to Del Rio. So these, these are great numbers. As far as where the snow is going to set up, 
Again, in Hill Country, there is a chance for some of that snow. You get into more uh, better chances, likely chances of snow as you get up towards San Angelo and further you go down I-10 into West Texas out into the mountains. So uh, just a heads up, again, we're not expecting snow here in San Antonio, but places in the Hill Country certainly could see some, and we're going to keep you posted on that as this storm system comes through. 75 degrees today, drop you off into the 60s tonight. And then we'll go uh, 70 tomorrow, 44 though on Thursday with a 70% chance of rain clearing out Friday night and looking good for New Year's Day. We'll be right back. Of course, we have all been on our more than fair share of Zooms and binge watching tons of shows during this pandemic. But back in October, the SA Live team got together for a quarantine oween watch along and they found some shows never even heard of before. They're giving us an encore today, so here's a sneak peek. That Carol Baskin lady, she ever shows her fat butt around here. Snake King here. You knew that. Though. I'm a huge fan. Your turn. Okay, okay. So hand here. No, I didn't nope. say put your hand just, there. Just go. Right. David Guest in yes. Champagne? This is my room. That's my champagne. Wait, ew. I am not sharing a room with him. I had to oh, do that God. at that stupid motel. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. This <laughs> I can't believe it. I don't even know how to work this. It's from Australia, and you can see right there, this is a spectacular representation. That guy doesn't have one sweet tooth. He's got a whole set of sweet teeth. Sure. Like <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Now cross your legs and clean. Now turn and put your hands on your head. Shimmy or shake your head. Oh, Beyonce it up. Okay. Yes. Okay. 